So the first thing you got to do when we're calibrating is we got to set up the monitor. We got to put the products in the tank. So if we haven't already done the tank optimizer, we have to physically go in and put the products in. To put a product in again manually is just go where the product name is. So in tank number one, that's the tank that we have something in it. Open it up and it'll bring up where you can go ahead and put your name or your product in. So the first one is product name. If it's not Durham, we can go in there and we can scroll through our products list that we pre-populated before we went seeding. We'll go in there, pick the product that we're going to calibrate. So today we're going to do Durham. Press OK. And then the next line is your rate increment. How much your rate's going to go up or down when you hit the plus or minus symbol. From there, you're going to have preset rate one, preset rate two. And then below that, you're going to have density. Biggest thing to remember, guys, is density has nothing to do with calibration. The only thing density has anything to do with is how much physical product we can put inside that tank compartment. If you want to figure out what your, your uh, density is for your cart, Grab one of your white pails, fill it full, flush to the top of the pail. This is 1.04 of a cubic foot. So do your math, take off that 0 0.04, weigh it. Now we have pounds per cubic feet. Now we have the proper density for that product. So then we can come in and we can enter that into the monitor if we want. Also below there, you'll have your cal factor. So when you're building your product, some of the products that you build won't have a cal factor. And if you don't have a cal factor, it won't spin the meters because it doesn't know what to spin it to. And what we're trying to figure out with a cal factor is pounds per revolution. So how much product that metering auger puts out for one revolution. So if you don't have a cal factor in there, you're going to have to enter one. So you just touch it if it has zero zeros, touch it, the little keypad will come out and enter one. For a low output auger, put in point 0.1, single flight, or double flight point 0.2, single flight point 0.3, high output point 0.4. That'll give you a starting point. And then also on the bottom of that screen, you have your range limits that correspond to the three sprockets on your metering auger. So you guys with sectional control are going to have to watch that so you can hit your highs and your lows. So when you have one section open or you have all six, eight or ten open. So you may have to change your ranges as you're going through. You don't have to change anything on the monitor. It all gets changed back on your metering auger. And there is a corresponding decal on each metering auger which range is which. So once we have the product in the tank, we can press OK. Then we're going to bring out our configuration tab. And with you guys with a new monitor, you'll notice on the top of that configuration tab is manual speed. And some of them will be set to zero. So if it's set to zero, we have to put a speed in there. And you'll want to put a speed in there that you consistently see that. So if it's four mile an hour, four and a half mile an hour, whatever it is, that's what you want to enter in there. So you're calibrating for the speed that you're going to be seating at. So right now I have it set to five mile an hour. To set it, just touch on manual speed. It opens up that box, touch on it. Now we can enter in whatever we need. From there we can go to multi-tank calibration. But before we do that, we want to take note of what our master switch color is. If your master switch color is red, touch it and see what you need to fix before it'll allow you to calibrate. If it only says fan speed to start, that's one that the calibration wizard will allow you to go by. If there's any other one that's red, you need to fix that before it'll allow you to go into calibrate. And the biggest one that we get at the service desk is the one that's called implement calibrated. What that is telling you is you don't have a product in one of your enabled tanks 
or you don't have a cow factor in one of those tanks. So it, will, it won't let you go in to calibrate. But right now, mine is white, so I can actually go in to calibrate. So I'm going to hit multi-tank calibration, go down to automatic tank calibration. Now it's just saying that you're in the wizard and you're doing a stationary calibration. So all I have to do now is press next. And now my monitor is set up, ready to go for calibration. Now I have to go to the back of the cart. So now that we're at the back of the cart, my monitor is set again. Got to make sure that our fans are running. Find your remote again, turn it to fill, fill cal. So hit your button twice. Can you hear the oil going through the metering circuit? One thing to check guys on our 7000 series cart on any year of model is we have a filter on the back side of our main valve block. And it is a check that should be done daily. So every time you have the fans, at any point when you have the fans running or you have the metering circuit engaged, come back here and make sure that that indicator is green. That filter is there on your metering circuit to keep any debris from getting at those PWM valves. PWM valves are very finicky to debris in the oil. So that's saving it before it gets there. But if for some reason we get debris in there and that does plug and it turns red, once it turns red, it actually hits a bypass and now it's sending everything through your metering circuit. It doesn't stop the metering circuit. So it is something that you should check and that's why that decal's on the side of the cart. <clears throat> so we got hydraulic flow. We got to crawl underneath. We got to take our downspout out of the airstream, put it into your calibration spout, find your pails, find your digital scale that came with your cart. And with this digital scale, it will hold a tear weight as well. So grab one of your pails. Once it's on there, push and hold the on zero button for about 10 seconds. Let it go. When you let it go, then it should be showing zeros. And when I take the weight of the pail off, it should show you what the weight of that pail is. Then we don't have to calculate the weight of that pail off of what our cal weight is going to be. So we have downspout, got a pail under there. First thing we have to do when we put a new product in the tank is we have to charge the metering auger because we don't want any false revolutions with no product coming out. So to do that, turn on the tank that you want to calibrate. So we have product in tank number one. Turn on tank number one until you see the orange light and then hit the play button. Once you get consistent product coming out, that metering auger is charged. But we don't want to use that sample because there was revolutions with no product. Grab a different pail. But on the monitor, you'll notice on that monitor, it counted revolutions and gave me an estimated weight. So I need to zero that out. Nice thing with the Apollo system is I don't have to go running back to the tractor cab to do that. I can do that from the side of my cart. Put the prime zero button. Once you see a green light, it's put my numbers back to zero on the monitor. And now I can go on with my calibration process. So turn on my tank that I want, press play, and now run my sample out. We recommend two thirds of a pail at least. So with that canola, it's going to take some time to calibrate. If you're doing a multi-tank calibration and one fills up faster than the other, just turn off the corresponding switch. So we'll get a sample. About two thirds of a pail. Now I can grab my sample. Now I can weigh it. Weigh my sample. 16.9. Now that I have my weights, now I have to go back to the monitor. So now we're back in the monitor and we have our weights. Now we have to enter them in. To do that though, you have to go to the next page. 
So just hit the yellow arrow. And now you'll notice the ones that are grayed out are ones that I actually ran the meter. So now I'm just gonna go in and I'm gonna put my weight. So I touch on it. 16.9, hit the green check mark. Once you have all your weights in, just press next to continue. Now what it's showing you is your old cal factor, your new cal factor, and the percent difference between the two of them. So right now my difference between the two cal factors is 31 point, just about 31.5 percent out. So at that difference, what I'm going to have to do is I want to verify that that new cal factor is exactly what I want to use. Maybe I did something wrong in my calibration process, or maybe that is the cal factor for that product. I just showed you that I put Durham in there, but I'm actually calibrating floor dry. So it's a different consistency, so it's going to give me a different cal factor. So I know that it is different. Now I want to verify that that cal factor it just gave me is what I want to go seeding with. So to do that, I need to press save. This is one of the biggest things that we see is guys forget to hit save. If you don't save that cal factor, what happens is the next time you go and calibrate and get your numbers, you're going to come back in here and you're still going to be 31% out. So hit saved, we saved that new cal factor. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna actually verify it, that I did it right. We open up our tank screen, just mirroring what your tank is doing on the monitor. And now I hit multi-tank calibration, automatic tank calibration, same thing you would do on the monitor hit over or next to continue. Now I'm in my calibration screen. Now I can go ahead and I can run out my second product. So I'm gonna put a new pail under. I don't have to charge the metering augers because they've already been charged. So I just turn on the metering auger that I need. Tank number one. And run out my second sample. And if you're watching your app, it's actually revolutions and estimated weight are changing. Once I've got my sample, grab my pail. Weigh my product. 16.9 again. So, press next. Find my button to put my weight in. Enter my weight. Press OK. Now, I've got my weight in there. Again, press next. Showing you my new cal factor, my old cal factor, and the percent difference. And my percent difference on this one here is zero. The cal factor never changed. So I don't have to save it, but if it changed a little bit, I'd want to hit the saved and then exit out. Once I exit out, I've calibrated my tank through the extend app. I don't have to be running back and forth. I can do everything through here if I want. <clears throat> so my tank is calibrated. Now I just have to clean everything up back here. Obviously, I've got to take my downspout out of the calibration spout, put it into the airstream that you want, or you're going to solid seed a strip about this wide. Everybody laughs, but there was a guy in Medicine Hat last week that admitted to doing 70 acres of canola like that. He forgot to do that. Remember to do all that, clean everything up. And the last thing that you should be doing when you leave the side of the cart is turning off your conveyor power. What that does is it turns your fans back on, which you could do through the remote if you wanted, but it also 
loses the link to this remote if you take this remote back to the tractor cab. Because if you have power to this switch and this remote's in your tractor cab and it has link, if somebody was in the dummy seat and started playing with it, he could or she could turn the fans off and or mess around with your conveyor if you want, which could be a bad thing and I've seen it. So just turn that power off, then it loses a link to this, then you don't have to worry about it. You guys that have X30s that want to use your weights, you'll have to leave this power on because as soon as you turn this power off, you lose the link and you lose your weights in here. But just remember that this is live. So we've calibrated, we're good to go there. We've cleaned everything up. Now I'm just gonna show you a couple features that you can do at the side of the cart if you want. So let's say you just finished filling and you wanna calibrate, but you don't have your tablet with you and you don't wanna run back to the tractor cab because you have the products already in the tank and that sort. What we can do with the Apollo system is our button A is set up to go into calibrate if we want. To check my runs, if I wanna run some product out, first I have to, before I leave the tractor cab, is I have to turn my ASC button off. If I have it on the on position, it won't allow me to turn my meters on. But also with that, I also have to have a preload time in there. So in the background of the monitor, you can put a time in there. So when you hit the master switch with no speed, it'll run those meters for however long you put in there. So I have a preload time of five seconds. Now I can go to my prime preload button, turn on one of the tanks that I want to put product out, have my fans running. And now it's running for however long I put in there. So I have five seconds in there and I can touch it as many times as I want. My fans are running, the product's going out to my openers. Now I can go around and I can check my openers and make sure that I've got product, I don't have any plugs. I can also do that from inside the cab if you want. Turn again, turn that ASC button off. Turn one of your tanks on, so the switch on your tank, and then hit the master switch button. And it'll run for however long you want. And when you look at the master switch, it's actually gonna count down the time that you have in there. Before we go seating for the first time, we get everything hooked up, we got product in there. We wanna check and make sure that we have our sectional control hooked up properly. So when I hit section number one, product's coming out of section number one. So to do that, I gotta turn my ASC button to off again. And I need a manual speed in there because I got a trick it that I'm actually seeding. And then I'm gonna go into my, oops, where my sections are. And I'm actually gonna check. If you wanna refine your times by standing here, you can do that too. Turn on section number one. Let's make sure that product is leaving section one and going to section one on the drill. I can do this from the tractor cab or I can be standing beside the machine with my extend app. Once we have that all done, we're ready to go back into the tractor and get ready to go seating.